solubility. There are two different contexts for considering solubility. There is the binary one, where a substance is either soluble or insoluble in a given solvent. For a substance to be soluble, it has to have compatible intermolecular forces. So compatible IMF, also known as AF, attractive forces. The solute and the solvent are compatible. There is also a quantitative context for solubility. In the quantitative context, solubility is given as a number with units. And that number, that number represents the maximum amount of solute that can dissolve in a given amount of solvent. When we're talking about aqueous solutions, where the solvent is water, Solubility is often expressed in grams of solute over 100 grams of water. For example, sucrose, the sugar that you find in those little white packets on the tables in restaurants. Man, how long has it been since you've been to a restaurant? That is sucrose. It has a chemical formula of C12H22O11. Anyway, sucrose is very soluble in water because it also can form lots of hydrogen bonds. So the solubility of sucrose is 180 grams per 100 grams of water. Sucrose is very soluble. We should also note that solubility depends on temperature. Some substances become more soluble as the temperature goes up. Some substances become less soluble as the temperature goes up. The solubility of sucrose of 180 grams per 100 grams of water is recorded at 25 degrees Celsius, also known as room temperature. For potassium chlorate, however, at 25 degrees Celsius, you can get 9 grams of KClO3 to dissolve in 100 grams of water. So, we say that sucrose is more soluble than potassium chlorate. So, solubility can be quantitative or binary. Going back to the binary sense, To determine whether or not one substance is soluble in water, we turn to the solubility rules. This is the solubility chart that you'll find in the Chem 1120C textbook. So, the one part of this that you should commit to memory is the stuff that is always soluble regardless with no exceptions so if an ionic compound contains any one of these cations sodium potassium ammonium or any one of these anions nitrate or acetate then it will be soluble regardless of what the other ion is and remember Ionic compounds contain two ions, and you have to decide whether the combination of those two ions is soluble or insoluble. So, on the other hand, down here, you have things that tend to be insoluble. If the anion is carbonate, phosphate, hydroxide, or sulfide, those tend to be insoluble. But the exceptions are when the cation is one of these always soluble cations, NH4 plus or group 1. And then, of course, 
it becomes tricky when you're in the middle here, category two. If your anion is chloride, bromide, or iodide, these are soluble, unless the cation is silver, dimercury, or lead too. So, calcium chloride is soluble, but silver chloride is insoluble. Sulfates, these are compounds that contain the SO4 2 minus anion. These tend to be soluble, unless the cation is barium, strontium, or lead 2. Also, silver and calcium sulfate are slightly soluble. Hence, we would expect aluminum sulfate, Al2, SO4, 3, to be soluble, but we would expect barium sulfate, BaSO4, to be insoluble. So again, it's a matter of seeing if the combination of cation and anion makes an insoluble compound. So here's an exercise for you. Figure out which of these following compounds are soluble. Pause the video. and work it out for yourself. Then unpause it when you've put an I for insoluble or an S for soluble next to each one. Now I'm showing my solution. We look at NaNO3. Na shows up in the first category that's always soluble without exception, as does NO3. So NaNO3 is soluble for sure. For BASO4, there's no rule for BA, but there is a rule for sulfate, and we see sulfate over here. Sulfates are usually soluble, but you have to check for exceptions, and it turns out that barium is one of them. So barium sulfate is insoluble. For calcium phosphate, there's no rule for calcium, but there is a rule for phosphate, and that is that it's usually insoluble. It's over here in the bottom right corner of our solubility chart. The only time phosphate is soluble is when the cation is one of these. Calcium is group two, it is not group one, and it is not NH4+. Hence, the rule wins and calcium phosphate is insoluble. So, our only soluble one is sodium nitrate.